cover the new topic exchange rates and the current account and we will discuss the Marshall learner condition which says that depreciation or de devaluation will improve the current account balance if the sum of foreign and a home import demand elasticity there is a small correction elasticities is greater than 1 if the sum is less than 1 then appreciation of currency will improve the current account balance so uh, when we were discussing the closed economy multiplier we said that the autonomous change in net exports have an impact on the changes in incomes and they directly impact the current account balance but here we didn't go into the the linkage between the autonomous change in net exports and the current account balance when I say the linkage I mean that if there is a switch in expenditure from domestic to foreign or foreign to domestic it tends to have an impact on the current account balance if DNA increases that means if there is a switch in expenditure from foreign to domestic goods then DNA increases and it tends to have an impact on the incomes or on the on the sorry on the current account balance but we didn't read the process through which this switch in expenditure has an impact on the current account balance that gap is provided uh, by the Marshall learner condition it, it links this switches in expenditure to the current account balance and it states that depreciation or devaluation will improve the current account balance if the sum of foreign and home import demand elasticities so we are bringing in the elasticities if it is greater than one then only you will see an improvement in the current account balance so it's not natural that if there is a switch in expenditure from foreign to domestic goods it will improve the current account balance certain conditions have to be met and those conditions are that the foreign and home import demand elasticity should together work out to be greater than one so I will try to prove it using both diagram and then do it mathematically the mathematical portion is given in the appendix of the Kennan's book it has very interesting appendix notes so it comes with very stringent assumptions the trade is balanced that is exports are equal to the imports initially home and foreign prices are constant home and foreign incomes are constant so I will go straight away prove it using the diagram and then we will use the some mathematics to prove how devaluation improves the current account balance now when I say it improves the current account balance it improves the current account balance both in terms of domestic currency and foreign currency okay so here is our uh, set of diagrams you will have four diagrams there will be an upper panel a left panel right panel there will be a panel below left and right the the upper panel will show the exports and imports in terms of domestic currency the lower panel will show exports and imports in terms of foreign currency so here are the panels this star denotes foreign country
So please try to understand this diagram. As I said, you have an upper panel. Look at the leftmost, leftmost panel. You have price of exports in the domestic market. Okay? And this is the amount demanded in the domestic market. So you are producing something. It has its price. It has a demand in the local market also. It is meant for export, but there is demand in the local market also. Okay, so say for example, you are producing leather, leather, uh, leather products. It's meant for exports, but there is a demand in the local market also. And there is a price. So, that's price in local currency. This is local currency price in local currency and there is a demand for it which is C1 and then there is a corresponding price of the same exported good in the foreign market and C it is equal to P1 by pi. Why? Because say for example pi is rupees 50 right and it's a uh, 100 rupee product that you are exporting. Okay, so say one US dollar, one US dollar is rupees 50. Okay. So say one rupee worth of thing would be one by 50 dollars in the international market. Rupees 50 is 1 US dollar, say rupees 1, rupees 1 would be worth 1 by 50 dollars or rupees 100, rupees 100 product would be priced 2 dollars in the international market. So there is P1 star, the price of exports in the international market and there is a demand in the international market for your exports which is C1 star. Okay, so this is demand. This is not in the foreign currency. This is a physical, physical quantity. This is in foreign currency. P1 is in terms of foreign, P1 star is in foreign currency. So these two panels, these are for the exports. This panel is for the imports. P2 is the price of imports. There is a demand for imports in the local market and C2 is the amount demanded, the demand for the imported good. So this demand curve is the demand curve of the foreigners. This demand curve is ours for the imported good. P2 is the price in local currency and there is C2 which is the amount demanded. Look at this, the rightmost lower panel. P2 star is the price of imports in terms of foreign currency. P2 star. And C2 star is the amount demanded of the imports in their country okay. and P2 if you wish to convert P2 star the price at which they are selling they are selling their exports their products if you convert it into local currency it will be pi P2 star so P2 is pi P2 star This D1, the demand curve of the foreigners, foreign import demand curve, this is D1. It has an elasticity of 1. Okay. So I can call it E1 star to denote 
foreign, foreign elasticity which is one and then you have the home import demand elasticity which lies from it can be any value lying from 0 to 1. So then the sum of foreign and home import demand elasticities is greater than 1 because it's 1 foreign import demand curve it's 1 this is anything lying between 0 and 1 so this so sum of the foreign and home import demand elasticity is greater than 1 now see what devaluation does you depreciate your currency so you have a fixed exchange rate it's not floating no country has a freely floating exchange rate it's a utopian type of concept so you have a fixed exchange rate for various reasons we are not going into the reasons you decide to depreciate your currency it was 1 us dollar 45 now you you move to 1 us dollar to 55 there is a lot of homework on what should be the rate as i told you it is a function of many right hand side variable differential interest rate differential inflation rate differential output rate differential money supply how are the other currencies moving so we are not going into that aspect that how do, how how much would be the new rate but you decide that you would depreciate your currency so when you depreciate your currency see what happens the imported price in terms of local currency goes up. 1 US dollar was 45, 1 US dollar becomes 55. So the imported price in terms of local currency goes up. But there is something else which happens. In the export markets, the price of your product in foreign currency goes down. 1 US dollar was 45, it becomes 55. So, one rupee worth of thing would be priced lower after depreciation and the hope is that if you decrease the price in terms of the foreign currency one believes that if one follows the law of demand if price goes up, goes down then the demand would go up how much will it go up it will depend on the responsiveness the elasticities that is why someone asked is elasticity not important? Elasticities are important and that's reflected in the Marshall Lerner condition. So let us first concentrate on the foreign markets. Before I do, look at the supply curves. Look at the supply curves. look at the supply curves there's one peculiar thing about the supply curves that they are perfectly horizontal reason because this set of proof comes with certain stringent assumptions that home and foreign prices are constant so look at the price of exports in the local market it's constant right so you have the perfectly horizontal supply curve here also you have the the price p1 star this is fixed initially so you have a horizontal supply curve can you let me know what can be the economic interpretation of this that Okay, we have made an assumption that home and foreign prices are constant, so you have a horizontal supply curve. Why do you see a horizontal supply curve, say, in the export markets? If I say that the initial price is 0 E and you have a perfectly horizontal supply curve, what does it signify? Okay, assumptions are okay that prices are constant, but there has to be an economic meaning. Mm-hmm. 
no it means that he is the only supplier who is providing this much of exports to this market he is the sole whole producer and he is providing this at a given price so he can provide anything all the supply at this price this is what it means if this is fixed zero a is fixed in the imported price then foreigners are that one foreigner that one country is providing you the entire supply so that is why it is fixed so that's how you would look at the 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 the, the assumption that prices are fixed what is so you are providing exports so it's your product going to uh, the foreign country this is the demand for that curve that product it's the foreign import demand curve so whatever is your export is their imports their demand curve and this is the price at which you are selling this is fixed that means you are the one who is providing the entire product it's not that there are many countries involved you and your partner is there that is why the exchange rate is between you and me in reality there are many countries so if you have to prove the uh, the marshall learner condition then you have to first come out with an exchange rate which has to be a weighted average of all the bilateral exchange rates where the weights would be the trade share so in india you have uh, two exchange rate it's nominal effective exchange rate and you have real effective exchange rates and it is and it is formed on the basis of five country and 36 countries it's a weighted average yeah so the assumption is that the prices the only way the price can change is through the change in the exchange rate there's no incentive to change the prices because home and foreign prices are constant it's a very stringent assumption home and foreign incomes are constant it's a very stringent assumption it's like those assumptions that you make in the classical model that income is at the full employment level so something of that sort so the only way to change the the price is through the change in the exchange rate and what you do is that you depreciate your currency so the price at which you would sell in the international market in terms of the the foreign currency it goes down okay that's what happens and if you are moving along the demand curve whose elasticity is one the the import volume of that country increases from 0 efg to 0 e dash f dash g dash and please see that even star is one so you have a unitary elasticity and the price go down the import volumes go up question is that given that the elasticity is one what can you say about oe dash f dash g dash and oe fg so remember when you have unitary elasticity if you decrease the price the value remains the same because it's unitary elasticity okay so your export proceeds in terms of foreign currency remains the same because you have uh, elasticity of one let us look at the imports in terms of the foreign currency now see how the exporter the exporters will interpret this depreciation when there is depreciation there is an increase in the price of the imports in terms of the local currency 
right so when the price goes up right you move along the demand curve and so the exporters will interpret this as an inward shift of the demand curve one us dollar was 45 one us dollar becomes 55 now the importers realize they have to pay higher in terms of the local currency the foreigners would interpret as a leftward shift of the demand curve so what happens to the import volumes it was zero f g o earlier because of this rise in the import price in terms of local currency the import proceeds in terms of the foreign currency goes down to e 0 e f dash g dash so see what happens the export proceeds remain the same in terms of foreign currency the import proceeds shrinks in terms of foreign currency so exports remain the same so imports go down so there is an improvement in the current account balance in term of in terms of the foreign currency look at the current account balance in terms of the local currency yeah d2 is the demand for the imports in the home country yeah so when this price increases they would interpret they that this is a leftward shift of this demand curve if you have understood this then look at what the exporters would think in terms in, in india that when there is a depreciation of the currency One U.S. dollar was getting you forty-five. Now it will get you fifty-five. They will interpret as a rightward shift of the demand curve. So your export proceeds, which were here, now goes up to A B dash C dash O. So your export proceeds go up because the exporters interpret as a rightward shift of the demand curve. Whose demand? Their demand. their demand we are talking of only home and foreign import demand elasticity so export proceeds in terms of local currency goes up can you say something about the import proceeds remember what has happened one us dollar 45 now 65 or 55 what do you think will happen to the import proceeds it was 0 a b c now with an increase in price it's 0 a dash b dash c dash given that the elasticity is lies from 0 to 1 remember if it's inelastic demand and if there is an increase in prices what will it do will it increase total revenue will it decrease total revenue or will the total revenue remain the same remember the elasticity percentage change in demand due to percentage change in price okay so it's inelastic demand which is lying between 0 and 1 so percentage change in demand is less than percentage change in price what do you think will happen to the total revenue what will happen to the total revenue the total revenue would go up if it were elastic demand total revenue would have gone down so here is a peculiar case export proceeds are going up import proceeds are also going up and we wish to comment whether there will be an improvement in the current account balance in terms of foreign currency and then i i say that there will be an improvement in current account balance because the increase in imports cannot be as large as the increase in exports so please think about the reasons you will still see an improvement in the current account balance 
even if the import proceeds are going up because the increase in import proceeds would be less than the increase in export proceeds why Now look at this, 0A dash 0A, the, the proportion at which the exchange rate changes is equal to 0A B dash C dash 0A B C, the changes in the export proceeds, but this is greater than 0A dash B dash C dash divided by 0A B C. Think of the changes here you can see in the diagram also diagrammatically it means this is the increase this is the increase here this is a downward sloping demand curve so even if this is greater than this this increase cannot be greater than this increase so even if this portion is greater than this portion this increase cannot be greater than 0 a b dash c dash because of the following that the percentage the change in the exchange rate is equal to this change and this change is greater than this So the maximum increase in imports is less than the maximum increase in exports and therefore you would see an improvement in the current account balance in terms of the local currency as well. No, uh, that's what it says that it improves the current account balance in terms of local currency and it improves the current account balance in terms of foreign currency provided the sum of the foreign and home import demand elasticity is greater than 1. So to answer it more then you need to go for the mathematical result it will be it will foreign home imp, foreign and home import demand elasticity so that should be in the of these two imports. so exports and imports in terms of local currency exports and imports in terms of foreign currency so here we saw the export proceeds remain the same but the import proceeds going down because uh, the foreigners would interpret the increase in the imported price as a leftward shift of the demand curve and this is demand curve of us it is demand curve of ours which they will think that it's a leftward shift because the prices have gone up so the demand is going down yeah and so they would interpret this as a leftward shift of the demand curve interestingly will be a case where the supply curves are not horizontal you would say, say that if the supply curves are upward sloping this MLR condition becomes a sufficient condition that means even if remember the sufficient condition there is some necessary and sufficient condition so even if the Marshall learner condition is not satisfied in, in case of upward sloping supply curves, you can still see an improvement in the current account balance. So now uh, let us uh, discuss, let us prove this mathematically. You could have always 
work this out to be say 0.8 and this to be 1 or 0 0.7, 0 0.8, the sum should be greater than 1. And you could still prove that you will see an improvement in the current account balance. You could also start with a case where the trade is not balanced. Think of a real situation where you have a deficit. And then you can always prove that if there is if the sum of the foreign and home import demand elasticities are greater than one, you will see an improvement in the current account balance. Try it back home, try it as an exercise. Think of a real situation when there is a deficit in the country. Can that deficit be wiped out and then current account balance be, become positive? You can still prove it using this simple diagram also. Okay, so the proof goes as like this. Okay, so the trade was balanced because trade is balanced when exports are equal to imports. So earlier 0 A B C okay, was equal to 0 small a small b small c. Exports were equal to imports. Here 0 E F G was equal to 0 E F small g. Exports were equal to imports initially. Then something happened. When you depreciate your currency, the price of exports in terms of foreign currency goes down. The price of imports in terms of local currency goes up. And therefore, you see that your import balances will change. The value of imports will change. Whether it will go up, go down, remain the same depends on the elasticity. Whether your export that value will go up, remain the same or go down, it will depend on the demand curve, right? But the proof is that if the elasticities of both work out to be greater than one, then you will see an improvement in the current account balance. So Marshall Lerner Robinson, it's MLR, Marshall Lerner Robinson condition, all of them derived independently this, um, uh, this condition. Uh, that the sum of the foreign and home import demand elasticities, if it is greater than one, devaluation will improve the current account balance. If the sum is less than one, then you have to appreciate your currency. So look, yeah, so uh, the they started with this thing that initially trade is balanced. What I'm saying is that you can prove this you, can, this, you can do as an exercise, that had it been a case where you had a deficit, deficit would mean that imports were greater than exports. Now if you work this out, you will see that the change in imports will be much greater than, it will depend on the the, the deficit that you have initially. Higher the deficit, higher will be the changes in the imports. So that at the end, if there is a depreciation, you will see, theoretically you can prove that there will be an improvement in the current account balance. So imports are greater than exports, but work out the deficit. The change that you will get will be an increasing function of this deficit. Higher the deficit, larger will be the change in imports. So that uh, uh, you, you would get an improvement in the current account balance. That's what happens. So uh, then think whether the elasticity is greater than one, equal to one or less than one. But So, uh, uh, 
you it is it will be not very apparent here what you are asking it will not be very apparent from the diagram that i have drawn but then bringing in the the concept of elasticity and the changes you can prove that i haven't gone into that question but but i know that that will depend on the absolute the deficit amount so uh, the changes in the imports would be such that it will be it will become a function of that deficit so larger the deficit larger will be the changes in imports such that at the end you will see an improvement in the current account balance okay so i have to put my mind into how to prove it using this diagram maybe tomorrow if uh, i can come back and answer that okay so the proof is uh, the is is a uh, little cumbersome but it's easy to understand so look at the trade balance you don't have exports of services you don't have investment incomes you don't have transfers you just have exports p1 is the price of exports in local currency c1 star is the demand for the exports in the foreign country but then this is the value of exports in local currency this is the value of imports in the local currency this is the trade balance so the change in the trade balance is now when i put a dot it means proportionate change dot means proportionate change so it p1 dot would mean dp1 by p1 c1 dot star means dc1 star divided by c1 star and why is this equal to this because if it's ab dab is a db plus b da divide by ab so you get dab to be ab a dot plus b dot dab is ab a dot plus b dot where a dot is proportionate change in a b dot is proportionate change in b now because you are talking of the demands so c1 star is a function of p1 star p2 star and the incomes the prices which prevail in the foreign country right and the incomes okay so p1 star is the price of the exports in in the foreign country what's p2 star remember there were two goods okay there is imports and there is exports so p2 star is that price and then you have incomes and you have c2 which is a function of r r import demand r demand is a function of p1 p2 and the incomes what's p2 it's the price of the import good right when i say price of the import good i mean import competing goods this is the price of the export good and this is income so then uh, using the total differential rule you get dc1 del c1 star del p1 star dp1 star plus del c1 star del p2 star dp2 star and del c1 star del y star dy star now define
Now define three types of elasticities. This is the own price demand elasticity. This is the cross price demand elasticity. This is the income elasticity. Now del C1 star by del P1 star, uh, if there is a, if, if you, if there is an assumption of law of demand, this is negative del C1 star del P1 star. If you put a negative sign, so this is greater than 0. This is cross price elasticity, you not, you don't know. It depends on whether the goods are complements or substitutes. And you have the income demand elasticity which is greater than 0 because it is a normal good. It is a normal good. Remember normal good, higher the income, higher would be the demand for that product. It is not an inferior good. Inferior good is higher the income, lower is the demand for that product. So, we have this equation which is the total differential rule. If you have to bring in elasticity, see what I do. I divide by C1 star, I divide by C1 star, I multiply and divide by P, P1 star, I divide by C1 star, I multiply and divide by P2 star, I divide by C1 star, Y star, Y star. So you get C1 dot star to be equal to minus E1 star P1 dot star plus E2 star P2 dot star plus E Y star Y dot star and C2 to be equal to E1 P1 dot minus E2 P2 dot plus E Y Y dot. So tomorrow we will see what happens if you put this and the value of C2 in this equation and further observe that P1 star is P1 by pi and pi P2 star is P2. So P1 dot star is P1 dot minus pi dot and, and pi dot plus P2 dot star is P2 dot. 1 and, and 2 and 3 and 4, we are going to put it back in the equation and then we are going to use the assumptions, those stringent assumptions that there is no change in price, there is no change in income. What you would finally get would be something like this. you would get something like this pi dot the proportionate change in the exchange rate even star the foreign home the foreign home the foreign import demand elasticity e2 the home import demand elasticities so these are demand elasticities foreign import demand elasticities home import demand elasticities minus 1. So if this 2 works out to be greater than 1 and you see a depreciation in the exchange rate that is pi dot is greater than 0 then only you will see an improvement in the current account balance. If this is less than 1 then you better appreciate your currency rather than depreciating to improve the current account balance. So we will come back and prove finally this. And then you would see another interesting result that this change in trade balance is a function of the real exchange rate where the real exchange rate is EP star by P 
this is the price in the in foreign country this is the price in domestic country it's a reciprocal of the terms of trade so you will see that dn the change in trade balance is a function of the real exchange rate real exchange rate real incomes so then once we prove that you will see another interesting result coming in that if there is a change in the nominal exchange rate but if the prices change and there is no change in the real exchange rate you may not see a change in the trade balance even if the marshall lerner condition gets satisfied so when most of the countries the handout that i have given you can also see that many countries which tried depreciation they found that it has an impact on the domestic prices because when you depreciate the 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 domestic price goes up you may not see a change in the real exchange rate and it doesn't affect the current account balance so even if the nominal exchange rate is changing but you see that the prices also go up in your country there will be no change in real exchange rate this will not have any impact on dn so your whole exercise become fruitless if there is an impact on the prices so the message is that if you have to change your exchange rate it has to be supplemented by changes in the expenditure policies to take care of the changes in the prices so many latin american countries which tried to depreciate uh, the their currencies and did not had a supplementary fiscal and monetary policy they saw they saw no changes in the the trade balance so uh, this is a handout which tells you uh, cases for 20 cases where you had large real devaluation achieved nine cases where some real devaluation achieved and no real dev devaluation achieved in seven of the cases bolivia nicaragua argentina and israel so here you had nominal devaluations but it affected the prices as a result you saw a minor change in the current account balance or a case where you had negative current account balance so as a researcher it, it will be an interesting for you to look at this aspect because this is from kenen's uh, in the kenen's book this is sebastian edwards looking at this type of data in 89 so you can look at the different countries wherein you see the nominal devaluation and check what is the real devaluation after k years and then see the changes in current account whether devaluations have helped countries to improve the current account balance so you should have two columns one is of the devaluations the other is the changes in the current account balance maybe you can just find correlations or you observe the data you will get some idea of the fact that whether uh, an a depreciation improves the current account balance or it deteriorates the current account balance so final message is that this this switching expenditure switching policies have to be supplemented with the expenditure changing policies to have a greater impact on the changes in the trade balance so that's what we will see in tomorrow's class thank you so much